Hey, greetings, how y'all doing? My name is Buddy Davis and welcome to my workshop. Today we're gonna to be showing you how I build some of the dinosaurs, talking about how I do it and showing you some pictures of it actually taking place. And then at the end of it, I'm gonna show you these dinosaurs right at the end of the talk. I call this, It Didn't Happen By Chance. And we'll show you how this goes, so hang on, here we go. So if you've ever been to the Creation Museum and you see some of the dinosaurs in and around the Creation Museum, uh, a lot of you know, and some of you may not, I'm the person who built most of the dinosaurs you see at the Creation Museum. This picture that you see in back of me is a big old uh, Asaltosaurus dinosaur, and I built him out of fiberglass, and that's one of the first dinosaurs that people see usually when they come to the Creation Museum, and they like to get their picture taken around this dinosaur right here. All right? And so if you go into the museum, you're going to find a, a room that's got a lot of my dinosaurs in. It's called uh, Buddy's Dinosaur Den. So I'm going to show you how I build a couple of the dinosaurs that you will see inside of the dinosaur den. Now, whenever I make a dinosaur like this, this is a big old um, uh, ceratosaurus right here. You see all these scales. They're not really scales on a dinosaur. People call them scales, but they're not really scales. They're little bumps that, that you see on a lot of dinosaur skin. I did each one of those one scale at a time, so you can imagine how long that took to build uh, this particular model, this ceratosaurus dinosaur. All right, so whenever we're building a dinosaur, though, there's a lot we don't know when all you have are the bones, and usually you don't have the complete dinosaur. Most dinosaurs, you just find bits and pieces of bones, and trying to figure out what that animal would look like, well, it can be a challenge for sure. So here's what I mean by this. Uh, here, here's a skull that, that's complete. This skull is complete. It's not in pieces. But if I didn't know what this skull would be and somebody said, hey, Buddy Davis, we were out uh, and, and we found this skull. You're a sculptor. Look at these bones and show us what this animal would look like if it be alive. Well, not knowing any more about this animal than just the bones, I'd probably come up with something that would look like this. Mercy. Based on what this skull looks like, you can see how I'd come up with that. But here's what this skull belongs to. We know what the skull is. It belongs to an elephant. <laughs> you see, I would never know that an elephant had a great big old trunk that was on it just based on that skull because that's just skin and stuff that will, will soon disappear after the animal dies. So whenever we find the bones of dinosaurs, there's a lot of pieces of that animal that is going to be gone on, a, on many of these animals. So it's a bit of a guessing game. But sometimes scientists are fortunate enough to find uh, more of the fossil complete. And this is a dinosaur right here that's got skin texture still on it. Kind of a recent find. This, isn't this cool? I mean, look at this. You can see exactly what this animal would like, look like. Now, we don't know what color it would be because the color always disappears on these dinosaur fossils, but, uh, but we got a good idea on what this animal would look like. This is a hadosaur dinosaur, and, uh, and it's got some of the skin texture that's on its body, so we know at least that what part of the skin and the muscles would look like on this dinosaur. So I'm going to show you how I built my Kentosaurus dinosaur. Oh, I always love Kentosaurus. He's a cool dinosaur. And I built this in 26 days. Uh, usually it takes me a lot longer than that, but I had to get this done. So I was working on really hard on this dinosaur to get it done in 26 days. I'm going to show you how I do it, though. Then uh, after this program's over, this, this part of the talk's over, I'm going to show you this animal. All right. So when I start to, uh, to do my sculptures, I make a pattern. Uh, of what that animal is going to look like. Just like if your moms would make a your shirt or, or, or a coat or something, imagine she would use a pattern. Well, there's no patterns that I can go out and buy when I'm building a dinosaur, so i got to make my own pattern. And so I take uh, several sheets of great big pieces of paper and lay it out. I make a grid on it, and I'm going to use that as reference when I'm building my dinosaur. So there's my pattern. i got it cut out right now. And I'm going to lay that pattern on blocks of foam and trace around that, and then I'm going to start my chainsaw up. Brrr, I'm going to start cutting that into different pieces right there and start to, 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 uh, to take the pieces away so I can start creating my dinosaur that I'm trying to make, my Kentosaur. So that's just getting him started. Now remember that picture right there because at the end, everything's going to look a lot different. Now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to put these legs on so you can see that I'm, I'm taking some spikes and stuff and I'm nailing the legs on this dinosaur and trying to make him, uh, get him almost where he's ready to stand up. So I'm going to have to turn him over. And then when I turn him over, I'm going to take him into my shop and I got a big old bowie knife, big old bowie knife. And I start to whittle on that, on that uh, foam 
and it starts to shape out my cantosaur. So that's what I'm doing right at this point right here. And look at all those pieces that I cut off that's laying on the floor right there. All right? And there's my big old Bowie knife. You can see that knife. Man, that is quite a knife, is it not? But I'm carving him out, and then I start to sand him off a little bit with a file and get him more in shape. All right? And now I've got his head on. And I have his neck on. I'm working on his feet. You can see it's coming together, looking, looking uh, a, a bit more like a dinosaur. And um, I've got some arrows right there just to stick the, uh, just to hold things together till I get foam and stuff laid in there so it will stick together. So that's why I'm not shooting him with with my bow and arrow. That's just to make just to hold my pieces together for right now. And you can see that his neck is straight, his tail is straight. We're going to change all that because I want him to be, I want his neck to be turned and I want his tail to be turned as well. So I'm going to have to do all that. So I decided that I wanted him not standing just like a, a, like a soldier at attention. I wanted him to look like he's walking a little bit. So I had to cut off one of those legs and I'm going to be bending that leg and putting it back on. A lot of work goes into that. And then you see this piece that looks like a wedge right here. I'm going to cut out a piece that will go in there. I'm going to have to make a whole new foot for this dinosaur. So that's what we're getting ready to do right now. There you can see it started to carve his foot out on a piece of foam. I'm going to shape it up and we're going to, going to put it in place. Look at my arrows that I got holding it together to get everything all glued together real good and solid. All right, there I said I'm going to turn the neck. Remember I said that? So you can see that I've got his neck turned right now, and, uh, and I'm putting his head on. You know what? I decided when I looked at that head, I don't like that head the way it looks. I think that dinosaur would look better if he had his mouth open. So eventually I'm going to take that head completely off, I'm going to do away with that head, and I'm going to make a whole new head with his mouth open. I'm going to carve it out of that same type of foam. So we're going to do that. I got his tail all bent now. Remember, his tail was straight, so you can see what I did right here. I, I cut it in different sections like that, and I'm gluing it together and, uh, and holding it together right there. And then we're going to fiberglass all that when this is all done. Okay, and that's going to make him good and strong. So we're working on him. He come together, and he's starting to look a little bit like I want. Still got the head on. See, his mouth is closed. Yep, I decided I got to make another head, so I did. So there you can see I did the head. There's his mouth open. Doesn't that look better? That looks a lot better, I think. And you can see I've got wrinkles on it right here because his head is turned like this right here. If you turn your head right here like this, you can see there's going to be wrinkles. And I look at different types of animals, uh, uh, and I can see wrinkles when they turn their head. So I thought, well, dinosaur probably did the same thing. So I'm carving in these wrinkles on this side. I won't put it on the other side because that would be stretched. But on this side where the neck is turning around like that, we put the wrinkles, got his mouth open. And it's starting to come together. Let's keep right on going here. Now there's the fiberglass. That's the fiberglass right here. And this is resin in my bucket. I have a brush, and I'm putting that fiberglass on. Oh, that's going to make him hard. It's going to be as hard as a rock when I'm all done. Okay? Because right now he's soft until I get that fiberglass on. Putting a little bit more fiberglass on right now. I'm putting him all together. It, 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 I did this again in 26 days. It usually takes me a, a lot longer not to do a dinosaur this size, but I had to get this one done, so I really worked hard. I decided, well, he, his tummy was not quite as filled out as what I wanted it to be, so I'm putting some clay there and, and sculpturing out his, his stomach more and filling that out. Because when, you know, when you're building these models, you, you, you stand back after I work a little bit, I stand back and I look at this. And I decide, oh, I could make out a little bit better. And so that there's what I'm trying to do to always keep trying to improve my dinosaur models. Wow, I'm getting the plates on. So you can see these plates. He was a, he was a type of stagosaurus, not the, uh, the typical stagosaurus that you see, but he's of that family. So that's his plates, and we're putting those plates on. All right now, I'm putting the fiberglass on them. All right, that's what we're doing right here, a little bit more of the work. Oh, I have a fun job. I just love doing this. I love seeing them all come together. Okay, there, wow, he's starting to look better, but he's all fiberglass, don't have his skin on him yet. You can see all of his muscle detail there, got his horns on, coming together, let's keep right on going. I'm putting his eye in, that's a glass eye, and so here's an eye, Take, I, I don't know if we can see this or not, but this is the type of eyes that I use for the, this right here. There's an eye, they're made out of glass, and we, we paint that eye on the back side, so let me turn that over 
That's what it looks like on back. We paint it on back, but when you turn it over this way, it looks pretty good. Okay, so that's the way we make the eyes. And that there's what we're doing right here, making the eyelid. And I'll put a nicotating membrane in here when I'm all finished. Uh, it'll be like a third eyelid for this animal. Okay, and uh, doing his face, part, starting to put the skin texture on this, on this Kentosaurus. And there's the way that I do the skin texture right here. You can see that I've got a piece of a clay and I carved out what his scales would look like. And there's a mold right there. Take a look at this. This is what I'm talking about. Here's a piece, here's a piece of that mold. And then I just press this against the clay on an animal and I get these scales like this right here that you see. So I press this on and sh shows you how I do part of that. Here's another mold, the same type of thing. You can see those scales that's on that. So I carve all of them out, then I make this out of latex, and then I press that on, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be pressing this on his feet. So take a look at the screen again, and you can see what's going to happen. There we go. There's from that mold, and we got, got the getting the detail. Doesn't that look cool? Looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Got his toenails on. Now I'm working on his horns. And getting these horns to look as real as what I can. Oh, I try to make them look real. Uh, uh, I just do the best job that I can with the information we have and trying to, I, I like, I, you know, I think God deserves our, our, our best, don't you? I mean, we have an awesome God, and I want to do my best for him. So when I'm building dinosaurs or whether I'm writing or singing songs, I try to do my best. So putting a little bit more of him together right now, getting all the skin texture on. There he is. Now I'm just uh, doing some fine detail work right there with my sculpturing tool. And there he is looking a little bit better. It's getting about time to start painting him. So now I'm starting to paint the dinosaur. Now I've never seen a Kentosaurus to know for sure what color they would be. As I said, the, the, the fossil record doesn't tell us what color they'd be. So it's kind of guesswork. Any dinosaur that you see in any book, nobody has seen a live one. So everyone shows it. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's the artist's interpretation as to what he wants that pattern to look like and the skin texture to look like. Here he is all loaded and ready to go to the Creation Museum, and here he is uh, being put in place, and I'm going to show you what he looks like here. I'm going to take a walk to uh, and show you this animal here in just a little bit, but I can promise you this, it didn't happen by chance. I could say, hey, you know, there was an explosion that happened in a fiberglass factory all millions of years ago, and that animal just turned out. And people would laugh at you. They'd see evidence. Somebody designed this. Somebody had to make it. And uh, everything. That, and this one's just a statue. Think of the real animal that had a heart that's beating, that had lungs that could breathe, that had eyes that could see, a brain that could think. It demands that the hand of God has done this. All this. Guys, it couldn't happen by chance. There's only one other alternative in the beginning, God. And that's who I want to give the glory to. Well, let's keep on going. I'm going to make a T-Rex right now. And I'm going to show you what that T-Rex looks like here in just a little bit, all finished. But now we're going to make a T-Rex. Remember I said I use a pattern. So we're going, to, we're going to make a pattern for my T-Rex. I do a little sketch on what I want him to look like. Look at the books that's in my collection right here. A lot of books right there. I use this information to, to, uh, uh, to find out as much as I can about uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right, so here we go, going to make our T-Rex. Did you know there's been... Only about 40 skeletons that be uh, uh, of a T-Rex has been found, and only about 15 out of the 40 are what they would call complete. And, and, and what they call complete is if you can find 70%, about 70% of only one side of the animal, they'll call that a complete dinosaur because they're pretty sure the other side of the dinosaur would look about like the side that they just found. So about only about only about 40, maybe slightly more than that now, but around 40 dinosaurs, but only about 50, 50 of them are fairly complete of T-Rex. So not a lot of information known about this famous dinosaur. Used to say that T-Rex stood up about 18 feet tall. When I was a little boy going to museums, this is the way that you'd often see T-Rex presented in the museums. But scientists have changed their mind. They now think that it walked bent over like this right here, and I think that's the way he would have walked as well. So when I'm building my T-Rex, I want him to be bent over a little bit like, like how scientists think that it would have really been. So I took my pattern and I traced this one here on pieces of plywood. Instead of foam, this is plywood on this part of the dinosaur and just getting him shaped out a little bit, all right? And this is his skull. In fact, that's a skull right there, right in front of you, right in front of the camera. That's the skull that I used to build my T-Rex. And this is a casting off of a real Tyrannosaurus Rex right here. And that's really cool, I think. 
And so I do the measurements and it shows me where the eye is going to be, where the nose is going to be, and a lot of information. Oh, you can't beat this type of reference whenever you're starting to build a dinosaur. All right. And so there I started to do the fiberglass work on it. And now there's something that, that, that's missing. What's missing in its mouth? Well, he's got to have some chompers. <laughs> he's got to have some teeth. He's got to eat. And so T-Rex, um, his teeth was about seven and a half and some of them over 13 inches in, in length. And so we're going to put some teeth. So I made the teeth and I put the teeth in his mouth. I'm going to fiberglass them in, in this dinosaur's mouth. But there's something still missing even when I get the teeth in. Can you guess what's missing in its mouth? I bet you can. It's his tongue. So I got to make a tongue. Now I've never seen the tongue of a T-Rex. But I'm pretty sure that it probably had a tongue of some sort. So I made a pattern of the tongue of T-Rex. I carved it out of foam, put fiberglass on it, and I say, open your mouth and say, aw, and I put that tongue in his mouth. And there goes his tongue in T-Rex's mouth. That ought to make him really happy, all right? And there's where his eye is going to be. And you can look at my fossil right here. This is, a, this is the one that I used right here. And uh, you can see where the eye is, and then you can look at the screen up there, and it shows you where I'm going to put the eye. So there's the eye of T-Rex, all right? And T-Rex would look forward. His eyes, a lot of dinosaurs' eyes were on the side of their head, like a lot of lizards. That's where the eye would be, on the side of the head. Not so with T-Rex. T-Rex, uh, his eyes looked more forward so he could see, uh, uh, see better. So that, that there's what we're, that's what we did right here. So we're, now we're raising his head up, putting him on my dinosaur. Oh, on this dinosaur right here, remember I said I did the one in 26 days? Uh, two years doing this one right here. But that's not working full time uh, uh, because I do other things when I was building this dinosaur. Now, if I was just working full time on it, I could probably build it in probably about oh, six months or so. But I was two years from start to finish on this dinosaur on T-Rex. All right. Now, he's as long as a school bus. So I'm welding some pieces of steel to make him really strong. Now, the fiberglass would have held him. That would have been strong enough, but I didn't want to take any chances. So I go ahead and I put steel inside of my dinosaur to even make him stronger in his legs and parts of his body. And again, he was as long as a school bus. That's 40 feet long. And that's about the, the uh, that would be a nice large T-Rex. Some of them didn't get to be that big. There's been a few that's been just a little over 40 feet that, that they have found. But that's a big animal, is it not? So we're putting steel on the inside of it, okay? And now starting to round out his tail. And I can tell you again, this is not happening by chance. It's showing a lot of evidence of design. T-Rex, I got a bulldog up here because T-Rex is kind of like a bulldog. He's really broad. He's stocky built. And so that's the way I'm building my T-Rex. All right. Now uh, you can see that I got his, rib, his, 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 his ribs built out there. Got his head in place. So let's keep right on working here. I'm uh, putting cardboard, just strips of cardboard. And this is just little straps that I'm putting on. And I'm going to, uh, to, uh, to, to do its body now. All right, so here we go. Now we're working on its arms. Now when I did its arms, I carved the arms out of a piece of foam. And so I made a pattern of its arms and cut it out just like this right here. I tell people that's my arm after I've been working out at the gym. You know, people don't believe me. I can't understand that. But, uh, but his arms were really, the arm part was no longer than a human arm. Now, the fingers are a lot longer than my fingers. This is his fingers right here. But his arm is the size of a human's arm. But according to this bone right here, this humerus bone, shows pits and scars that would be on it. And it shows that he was really muscled, big muscles up here on Tyrannosaurus Rex. Little arms, but wow, were they ever muscled. And so that's the way that I'm building my dinosaur right there. So now I've got to put the arms on the dinosaur. So I got those little arms on this big animal. Now, this is not a T-Rex with pajamas on. I just put that up there for fun. But this is the way that I did part of, of this animal. I just laid a blanket on him. And you can see this blanket automatically put wrinkles in places where I'd have to sculpture those wrinkles in. But you can't have a blanket on a sculpture. So I'm going to put resin on this and then very, a really light coat of resin. And then the next day that resin is going to set up. It's still going to be soft, but it's going to be a little bit harder because that resin's in it. And it's hard enough that I can start putting pieces of fiberglass over all this. And then it's going to turn as hard as, as, hard as a rock. But that's a little bit of a secret that I do whenever I'm, I'm making some of the wrinkles in some of my dinosaurs, especially some of the larger models. So now we're working on his tail, working on his feet, 
And you can see we're getting some, some work done on its legs right here, carving all that out. Now I'm starting to put the fiberglass on the toes. And that, these are the claws. That's going to be the claws on the toes. So that's not popsicles on the stick. That's claws on the stick. And, uh, and that's going to be his toes. And we're going to put them on the feet of my dinosaur, fiberglass them all in. And there he is. He's got his toes on. And getting a little bit more fiberglass. You can see all that green type color right there. This is all fiberglasses on. Don't have his skin on yet. So we've got to get to that here in just a little bit. Okay. Oh, look here. Can you see this right here? That's my dog right there. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I'm going to tell you something a lot of people don't know. When I got all done, this dog's got his paw print on this dinosaur here. Yep, and people can't ever find it because I've got it really hidden well. But it's there someplace. And a lot of people try to find that. But that's a little dog right there. His name is Willow, okay? And so working on his tummy right here. Oh, was that ever heavy, trying to take that off right there. And I had to work a little bit more on the stomach. And it was easy to lay it down, cut it off and lay it down, work on it this way than trying to stand underneath of a fiberglass and that fiberglass falling in your face. Didn't want any part of that. So that's the way that we did that right there. Okay. Uh, working on its back. Oh, just about getting done here. Putting a little bit more fiberglass on. All right. Decided to need to do a little bit more work on that leg. Remember I said sometimes I stand back and I look at my model. Uh-oh, I need to do something about this. And that's what I did right there. So I'm putting some clay on. I'm going to put fiberglass on that. When the fiberglass sets, I'm going to cut the fiberglass off. I'm going to pull the clay off. I'm going to put the fiberglass back on. All right. A lot of work to it. Here we go. We got that leg all back on, working on his back. And there's a little bit more skin texture going on him. And this is a, a, a piece of skin texture off of a T-Rex. I just wanted you to see what it would look like. And so I'm going to try to duplicate that as close as I can. And so this is the way I'm putting on my skin texture. And what I did, I took some uh, Cabosil, mixed it in resin, and then I start spreading it on like this. And I have a little tool that looks like this right here with some scales. And I'm going to roll that. I'm going to take this like this little tool, and I'll just roll this. And that's how I'm getting the skin texture that's on it. That clear? I hope so. All right, we'll keep right on going. There's that roller. <laughs> there he is right there. Okay, so we're rolling those skin texture on. There's a little dog I was telling about. That's Willow. And there's Willow's paw print on that dinosaur. And a lot of boys and girls try to find that paw print. Very hard to see because I've got it hidden really well. When I do my sculpture and all done, I like to sign my dinosaur so you can see my name that's on it. But my dog helped me out by keeping me company, so I thought that dog ought to have his paw print on that dinosaur. All right, so there he is, just about all done. So now I've got to get him to the Creation Museum. So how, how, how did I get him to the Creation Museum? This is the best part. When I got my dinosaur all done, here's how I got him here. I got on its back and I rode him down. You buy, you buy that? <laughs> do you believe that? No, I'm just teasing you guys. The way that we actually got him down here is we had to, we, he's so big, I had to cut his head off so he could get underneath the bridges on the interstate, and, uh, and then we're hauling him down in, in a big old truck. Hey, you talk about getting stairs on the interstate going down the road with a headless dinosaur. And so here goes our crew putting him in the Creation Museum, getting him all in place, and there he is right there, and you can see him. I'm going to show him to you here just a little bit. And I can promise you this, that it didn't happen by chance. Anytime that you see this animal, somebody again, just like I told you before, would see this animal and they say, hey, buddy, how did you do that? I say, oh, I didn't do that. There was an explosion uh, millions of years ago and it just in a fiberglass factory and that just turned out people would laugh at you, would they not? Uh, because it's obvious that somebody had to design this. And this is just a statue. It doesn't do anything. Think of the real animal again, that it could move, it could think, it could see. And it demands that the hand of God has done this. Well, one of the things that I always like to do, and my favorite thing that I get to do when I do any presentation around the country, is give the gospel message. Because it's so important. Boys and girls, moms and dads, whoever's listening, are you saved? Are you saved? Have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins? Have you put your faith and trust in Christ and Christ alone? Guys, it's the most important decision you're ever going to make in your life. I hope that you have done that. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Have you done that? If you haven't, you need to do that. It needs to be the real deal. You need to mean that. You just don't say that 
and, and, and not mean it. You got to mean it and do your best to live for Christ. Doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. None of us are. I'm sure not. But I know when I mess up and I always ask Jesus to forgive me and to help me to try to try to do better. And I, and I know that he'll do the same for you. And I'll see you guys in heaven one of these days where we can walk up to a big old T-Rex like this right here and be able to kiss him right on the nose and won't be afraid of him at all. Will that be great or what? It's going to be awesome. All right. Well, I wanted to tell you about some of the things that we have. Uh, uh, you ought to join me on Facebook. I hope that you do. And to find me on Facebook, you got to get on AIG Buddy Davis. Put in AIG first and then Buddy Davis. And I think you'd really enjoy our Facebook. We don't have it very long, but two or three pictures on a day and always a scripture verse. I have a number of books that's out. Some of my adventures, I've been over 60 adventures. I've searched for Noah's Ark in Turkey. We got that adventure on there. Hunting stories, fishing stories, camping stories, stories about animals. I think you would really enjoy that. A lot of humor that's in it. My movies have been winning awards, and, uh, and I think you would love the movies. They're for the whole family, and I have a number of CDs that's out as well. And this one here, I want to thank you, Jesus. It's a CD for the whole family, but I put a few children's songs that's on this as well. I got a song about Tyrannosaurus Rex and a dragon that's on there, and I, I think that you would really enjoy some of these, uh, some of these CDs. All right? So, well, let's go along with me right now, and, uh, and I'm going to take you up into the dinosaur den. I'm going to show you these animals that I showed you how they're made. I'm going to show you how they're displayed right now, okay? Come along with me. Hey, I see you made it. That was a fast trip, wasn't it? Here we are at the dinosaur den, and I wanted to show you these dinosaurs that I just showed you how I built them. I'm going to let you see them right now in the Creation Museum. So we're in Buddy's dinosaur den right now. Check, look right up there. You're going to see this dinosaur we're going to be talking about. Yep, that's my Kentosaurus. And let's go up here and get a better view of him so you can see what he looks like here in the Creation Museum. So follow me right up the steps. Here we go. I showed you all about how I built this dinosaur, so I thought it would be fun to just to take you into the dinosaur den and let you see, and let you see the Kentosaurus and what he looks like right now. And, and uh, here he is built all out of fiberglass. Uh, you can see the skin texture that we talked about, how we painted him, and how he is put on display. And boy, was it ever a job to get him up here because we had to be very careful getting him up here. I had to design him so that his tail was turned just right so it would fit, and, uh, and I was sure happy when he finally got into place. So that, if you ever come to the Creation Museum, you can say, hey, I've seen this dinosaur being built from scratch. All right, now I want to show you the T-Rex as well, so follow me right this way, and we're going to go right on up the steps. I'm going to show you that big old Tyrannosaurus Rex that we was just talking about on how it was built. And as we're doing it, check out these horns right here. I really like the horns in Kentosaurus. I think Kentosaurus is such a cool-looking dinosaur. I was really happy when I, they told me that I could build a life-size Kentosaurus. And this would be a really big one, too. A lot of them didn't get to be quite as big as this Kentosaurus right here is. But this is a, this is a, this is a large for a Kentosaurus. All right, now let's go. Let, let me show you my big old Tyrannosaurus Rex, and he's right over here. He's about 40 feet long. That's as long as what a school bus would be. And you can see skin texture right here. And boy, it took me two years to build this dinosaur. Uh, if I was working all the time, as I said, I could probably build it in about six months if that's all I was doing. But I was doing other things as well. So my dog has his paw print right underneath one of those legs. And uh, it's very hard to see, but it's there. And so every big old T-Rex had between 50 to 60 teeth in its head. And you can see I said that its eyes look forward. And there's his eyes there looking forward. And... Uh, I thought you'd just like to see that. Uh, he's a big old animal. Look at me standing next to this T-Rex. Can you imagine that? Hey, won't it be great when we get to heaven if God shows us, if he shows us what a T-Rex would look like, we won't need to be afraid of this guy. We can just walk up and pet him. Wouldn't it be fun to get on his back and take a ride on a trail? Mercy, that would be a lot of fun. Well, I hope you have enjoyed the workshop today. I've really enjoyed showing you how I build the dinosaurs. Check us out. We're going to do some more workshops here and show you how we do things and uh, tell about God's awesome creation. So uh, God bless you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time.